Good evening. It's Monday night. It's the start of a brand new week, um, which means it's the start of another Periscope, another uh, uh, Mind Hacks and Motivation um, Periscope, helping you get further in your life faster. Vishal is here. Good evening, Vishal. Great to see you. Um, so uh, we're just going to give people a few minutes to join. For those who don't know me, Sam's here. Uh, my name's Ross. I'm an actor and a voiceover artist. Archie is here from Manchester in the UK. Chris Stone is here. Um, and I spoke three times a week. Mondays, Nina's here. Nina, hello. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Good evening, Vishal. And Mondays and Wednesdays, we do something called Mind Hacks and Motivation. Friday, we do Book Club. And uh, how good is this month's Book Club, by the way, guys? Like, has everyone been out and bought the book? Let me get the book. Just for those who might want to join us on Friday, reading uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. It's a classic book. It was written in 1937, I think, but it's all about the science of success. And success hasn't really changed since 1937, has it? Success has and always will be success. So this is almost like a Bible, a textbook of success. Napoleon interviewed 504 of the greatest minds in America back in the uh, early 1900s. People like Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, the Wright brothers responsible for aviation, Henry Ford responsible for Ford motor cars, Mr. Wrigley of Mr. Wrigley chewing gum, um, and distilled down the, the success kind of principles, I guess, 17 principles for success. Yet reading it now, I've written out my statement. Awesome, Nina, yes. Good on you. It's uh, Gemma is here as well, um, but it's a great book, and I'm so surprised. How much was it on your Kindle, Nina? This is a fiver I paid for this on Amazon. It's so cheap, 4.99. It's a really good quality book. Um, caught up on the replay was great. Ordering tonight when I find my Amazon gift card. Yes, excellent, Sam. Good, good, good. Well, it got me thinking, guys, because as I say, success has well has and always will be success. Okay, it's not really going to change, is it? What makes people successful? today was what made people successful in 1937 is what will make people successful in 3037 if the world hasn't been blown up by Kim Jong-un. I'm probably going to get blown up now I've just said that. I bet he's monitoring all periscopes in North Korea and now I'm going to get an H-bomb right on my house in Flixton. Kim, I'm joking mate, I'm joking. Um, so uh, yeah, I was saying um, success hasn't changed. 71p Nina got. <laughs> God, think and grow rich for, from. That's amazing, Nina. Absolutely awesome. Um, so it made me think of other people in history who have just been legends because, you know, people like, um, you know, like the Wright brothers, people like Thomas Edison, you know, people uh, from that era, you know, changed the way that, that, that the world operated, really. And there's been a lot of people through history who have done that. And I'm sure there are people today, like, you know, the Steve Jobs of the world. There'll be people in the future who do this as well. Um, but I thought one guy who, well, from what I know of him, which actually isn't that much, who always stands out on, on motivational quotes and all that kind of stuff. I am plugged in. I am on aeroplane mode, Kim, and I have got my brew. So thank you very much for reminding me. Um, if uh, if Sasha's on, you need to tell her to plug in because her phone died last time. I've done zombie. It's now time to get my alien on. Oh, he's talking about films with Chris Stone. Chris Stone's a director, by the way, if people are wondering what these comments are about. Um, anyway, it made me think of this guy, Abraham Lincoln bit of a legend, don't know if you know much about him, he was the 16th president of America, okay, but it, it wasn't just one of these these presidents who just comes and goes without really much happening, a bit like, I guess like Barack Obama, he's got a bit of a job on his hands today, hasn't he? This man had a job on his hands, something called the um, the Civil War, <laughs> just a small just a small thing in America, um, and he got, well, he got America through probably the bloodiest time that it had ever been through. Um, whether there are bloodier times to come with the state of affairs these days, who knows. Um, but he was a bit of a legend. He got them through a lot. He also abolished slavery, which was a massive step in America. Okay, so he, he went through quite a lot in his watch. Unfortunately, he was assassinated, um, but he was still a good guy. They probably wanted to kill him because he was he was doing great things. He's also a vampire ha hunter, according to Hollywood. Yeah, he was. I don't know what. I don't know what the uh, the the factual evidence is behind that, but maybe he was. He was obviously an all-round good man who just wanted to hunt out evil, even if it involved chasing things that you know might not even exist. Um, so tonight, I wanted to look at what Abraham Lincoln can teach us about uh, career success. Okay, because he had bar being killed a pretty good career. Um, so we can take a lot of things from him, just not the assassination part of his life. Um, so I've pulled, I've pulled out five of my favourite quotes, five of my favourite Lincoln quotes, and we're going uh, to look at what they mean. Now this stuff, like I say, success has always been success, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. I know a lot of the stuff that we talk about on these scopes, we're constantly reminding ourselves of the same themes, maybe in a slightly different way, um, but this is the stuff that we need to remind ourselves of. You know, external motivation, um, 
it's bullshit. Um, effectively, this is you know it doesn't. It, it might last for a couple of days, but it's the internal motivation, the intrinsic stuff, the things that you learn and actually practice and put into your life and turn into habits, rituals, patterns, things that you uh, you do regularly that are really going to change you. Um, so in order for us to keep reinforcing that, we do have to keep going over the same points. It's like having a, have a shower every day. You don't have a shower on a Monday and smell great on a Friday. You can't kind of you know be motivated or you know inspired on a Monday, and if you don't carry that through the rest of the week expect it to have lasted till Friday so we are addressing similar themes but in slightly different ways all the time so as I said here's a picture of him and some chap the bullshit bomb hit it early sign. yeah it did I've, I've got a loose tongue since since I say it a lot in Bulletproof Factor for those who don't know what Bulletproof Factor is mindset course I've got coming out to the public on the 20th of January 20th of this month nine days in two days I'm about to unleash something to the world that I'll give you a sneak peek of the later to, uh, later on this scope so here's uh, here's the man himself the 16th president United States serving from March 1861 until his assassination in April 1865 so just one watch effectively, one term of presidency, still did an awful lot. Already on unit two, Kim's already got access to Bulletproof Factor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success, the mindset course that I will tell you more about after this. Um, it's awesome, Kim, to see it changing people already. Um, so do let us know how you're getting on with it. Tweet any pictures of, of, of your workbooks and things that you're doing um, as you're going through it. Um, it is brilliant because it was seven months of my life, that project, and it's, well, it's still going to be ongoing for the foreseeable because uh, we've got the live trading that's involved with it and uh, you know a lot of stuff to come as well. The founding members who buy it at launch or already bought it will always get the new bonuses and things that go into it as well. Um, they won't be available to people who get it down the line, but to reward you guys for all your support, um, anything that I come up with that's new, new modules and things that are gonna get added to it, you'll get those for free, so, uh, so that's cool. So, first quote, okay, first quote of Lincoln that I love. This, do you know what, this is just like, this is just life, this. Um, this is so important. Gemma's loving it as well. Gemma's talking about Bulletproof Factor. Awesome, Gemma. Do uh, do let me know how you're getting on as well. And don't rush the course, people, as well. Absorb a unit at a time. Don't just sprint through it and don't answer things lightly or think, oh, I've already answered that from somewhere before. Be very, very careful with your uh, answers. It's effing amazing. I absolutely love it and constantly hint about the lessons. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Right, okay. So, quote number one from Abraham Lincoln. I love this. He says, most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. Does that resonate with you? Has there been a time in your life where you've gone, wait a minute, and you've kind of had a realization that actually you have a choice and you can make up your mind about how happy you are? So I've got the slide, I'm gonna read it to you without knocking over my, uh, my coffee here. So the lesson really is to develop a positive mindset. You who are watching this have already done that, I'm guessing, you've consciously done that by watching this scope and you know being in this kind of niche that we're, uh, that we're all in and working towards. So most of the time, the problem itself is not the real problem, okay? That isn't the real problem. The way you perceive the problem is the real problem. Another great quote, Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can hurt you without your consent. Do you realize that? I mean, do you understand that? I really hope you do. To put it simply, you are the one who decides how you respond to the circumstances you face. And I know I've covered this so many times before, but this is a little bit of a different way of looking at it. If you make up your mind to be positive, you will see positives in the negative events. And those going through Bulletproof Factor, man, you've got some powerful lessons on this topic to learn um, later on in like units four and five. You will be happy if you make up your mind to be happy. Has anybody, like, have you ever just woke up one morning and just gone, right, enough is enough. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decide now that I'm just going to be happy because I'm sick of the external influences in my life and other people, other people's bad habits, bad patterns, you know, brushing off on me because we're often very much influenced by our environments, guys. And sometimes you have to make a, just an absolute definitive choice one morning to go, this is it. From here on out, I am making this choice because I've got the power to make it because I can. That's the gift that we're given. We're given a gift of choice that we very often never realize. Um, and it's not the situation, like it says, it's often not the problem itself that is the real problem. The real problem is how you respond to that problem and what you're seeing within that problem. That's the issue, okay? So it's not actually the problem. It's the way that you perceive the problem that is the real problem. It's a lot of use of the word problem there. Um, so yeah, so so number one from Mr. Mr. Lincoln, most folks are as happy 
as they make up their minds to be. Give me some hearts if you resonate with it and, and you like it. I love it. It's like probably my favourite one. That's why it's slide number one. But it's the key to life. Most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. So that's number one. Number two, the hearts are pouring through for, uh, for Abraham. Hopefully you're watching this. Big A up there. Um, number two. Okay, so I won't show you the slide yet. So number two, his quote was, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. It's as simple as that. For the actors on the scope, Jill Trevelick, um, Emmy nominated Jill Trevelick, I am um, casting director for Downton Abbey in an interview she did with me last year. She said, uh, Hitesh, hello. Um, yeah, she said to me, she said, you know what? She said to everyone who's listening to, to this, this podcast I was recording with her, she said, if you believe that you truly have something to offer, if you really, really, really believe, she said, you have something to offer, your time will come. You just might have to wait. So Abraham's quote was, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. So let's look at this slide. The lesson is to prepare yourself, simple as that. Okay, if you wanna succeed one day, preparations are what you need to do right now, okay? When an opportunity comes, it won't last long. This is so true, guys. You have, you really have a finite opportunity, um, a finite time, sorry, to take opportunity when they, you know, when it arises. If you're not fully prepared to grab it, you will miss the opportunity. But if you've done your part and are prepared, you can seize the opportunity and make a difference in your life. Okay. If you prepare, your chance will come eventually. Okay. Remember. Chances come and go in life. The difference is, is uh, whether one is ready to seize it. Napoleon says that too, you have to have patience. Absolutely, so I've said this loads of times, okay? There is no such thing as right place, right time. That does not exist. That's, that's the phrase that losers use <laughs> when they say, oh, he did well, he did better than me. Oh, but he was just in the right place at the right time. We said it before, but some of Hollywood's greatest talent had to wait until middle age. Yeah, and um, what was, um, Chris Stone will know this, uh, Morgan Freeman, what, what, when did he get his break? Is it in his 50s? I'm sure it was in his 50s. And yet you'd look at him today and you'd think he, he was like Hollywood, well, royalty, because he is, but you would think he'd been around for decades. Um, and, uh, and he only got his break, I'm sure it was in his, in his early 50s or something like that. Chris says, yeah, he's, he's, he's like the film knowledge geek, he'll know all that. So yeah, losers say things like, um, he was in the right place at the right time. Ian McKellen as well. No such thing, right place, right time. Actually, what that is, is that is opportunity meets preparedness, okay? Because an opportunity can come along, but if you ain't prepared for it, then you ain't gonna be able to take it. So I was, I was doing a job, I was lucky to do a job um, on the new se season of, uh, of Happy Valley, which is coming out um, later this year now. I did it late last year. And the driver on that said to me, he wanted to get into acting and he was an actor. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't an actor, actually. he'd just been around the acting industry a long time, driving actors around from sets, you know, various sets, working on a lot of big shows, met a lot of great actors. And he said that last year, so no, it would've been the year before, so 2014, he was offered seven episodes um, in a daytime drama. And it was seven episodes with no um, audition, didn't need to audition for it, that was just what he was gonna be, uh, be offered on a plate. And unfortunately, he wasn't in the right place, the right frame of mind. Um, he'd been going through a divorce and stuff, but he, w he was all over the place. He hadn't got anything sorted after the divorce, and he was just, you know, he wasn't in a place to do it. He wasn't prepared, basically, for the opportunity to come along, so he had to turn it down and say no. Now, if that opportunity had come around today, when he's got all his shit together, um, you know, and he's, he's in a right, right frame of mind, you know, he's prepared, that opportunity comes along, he's gonna be able to take it. It's quite an extreme example because there'll be some stuff in there that are out of his control, I guess, you know, with it being a, a breakup and a divorce and that kind of thing. But point kind of still stands, you know, you're only going to be able to take an opportunity if you're prepared for it. So there's no such thing as right place, right time. It's so opportunity meets preparedness, bang, and then the two go together. Like a fist in a hand, hand in a glove or something. Um, yeah, so two, there you go. I will prepare, says Abraham, and someday my chance will come. Simple as that. Don't worry about it. Don't stress too much more than that. Just get prepared. Now, three. Okay, got three quotes left. This is a great one as well. And this is something that those people, again, this is, that was so partridge. 
Basically, Chris, it, you know, it, it, I, I could do a scope one night as Alan. Welcome to Alan's Late Night Scope. Today, we're going to be talking about what it is that makes, what clothing you have to wear for success. I like ice white socks, ice white trainers, and a blue Mac. That tells me you're a man who knows who he is. I'm Alan Partridge. We probably won't do that. Let's look at, let's look at Abraham's third quote, okay? Those who are doing bulletproof acts are unstoppable confidence in fitness success will know this is a big part of my life as well. You're, you're going to hear my life story in, in, in Unit 3. Um, and I'm so honest, man. I'm proper honest in that. There's loads of stuff in there I share with people I've never shared before. So check it out. Um, he says, I'm a slow walker, but I never walk back. Big thing in my life is to never go backwards. Never feel like I am moving backwards. And also to empower other people so that they never feel that they're walking backwards either. It's, it's a real, you'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll know after doing Bulletproof Actor why it's important to me. Um, I won't go through it on air, but you'll know when, uh, when you do the course. Um, so let's read, uh, let's, let's read this, uh, this uh, slide out. So being fast doesn't mean anything, all right? Was the Great Pyramid built in a short time? No, okay, so according to the uh, ancient Greek historian Herodotus, <laughs> it took 20 years to build that pyramid. I mean, people love it today, but it took 20 years. Success never happens overnight, okay? When we are faced with hardship, we often choose the easiest way, which is giving up. It's easy to quit. It's probably the easiest thing to do, but it won't get you elsewhere, okay? Never do anything that will drag your progress backwards, okay? It's okay to be slow in your progress as long as you don't stop. And when I talk about that, I also mean don't don't take instant gratification right now that's going to potentially end up in long-term pain okay people do this all the time they see an easy option now to get ahead of the pack um, and then they they either burn themselves out or that thing doesn't last forever um, they don't do things properly people in the internet world do this they'll find a loophole on google to try and get onto a page one ranking. So they go, right, my business has got to be on page one and I've seen a loophole within Google's algorithm. I'm going to exploit it and I'm going to get to page one and build up all this, all this uh, you know, traffic to my website. And then what happens is Google come along and go, ah, we've seen this loophole in our algorithm here. Anyone who's exploited it because they've just been scum, <laughs> we're going to what's called Google slap them. Bang! And then they just basically, Google just goes, right, we're going to just not even index your site. We're going to take you off Google. And then you go, oh my God, if I'd have built up that traffic by working hard on my website, generating organic traffic, putting great content out there that people want to see rather than exploiting a loophole, I'd be on page one anyway. And I'd be on there forever rather than me being on there for five minutes and then, I'm, and then I say I'm gone forever. Um, so don't do something that's going to get you instant gratification today that's gonna to lead to like long-term pain and effectively you walking backwards, okay? Always walk forwards no matter how slow you are going. So in your acting or your directing dreams or your anything, you know, God, like your, your earnings, your relationships, your emotional mastery, your spirituality, um, this applies to all areas of life. Um, just go slow, but make sure you do things properly. So when you're doing Bulletproof Acts or Unstoppable Confidence Infinite Success, take every single question in those units in. There's lots of places within the videos in there that says pause and take some time out. Do pause the video and take some time out and actually you know, review what we've just gone over and you know, hand write. That's why I get everyone to print the workbooks out so they can hand write stuff. You'll remember it a lot more and you'll take it all in so that in the future it'll stay with you as opposed to rushing through it now, go, yeah, I finished the course, da -da -da, instant gratification, I've done something great, I've completed it, and then actually you're not with, you know, withhold that information. Bulletproof run, definitely still slow. So yeah, for those, yeah, I forgot we were doing this. So we're doing the Greater Manchester and 10K, which is in, when is it, Sam? It's, is it May? I think it's May the 22nd, isn't it, or something? We're all doing that. If you're not part of the Bulletproof Factor Facebook group and you're an actor, or even if you're not, we don't care, we'll adopt anyone, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Bulletproof Actor, join and register for the Manchester 10K if you're in the UK or if you're in another part of the world and you want to fly over. Come and run the 10K with us. We're going to run it together as a group, as a bulletproof group. Nobody is going to be left behind. We're going to cross the finish line as a group. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're going to do it as a team. So join, that'll be, uh, that'll be awesome. Do it, Chris. Chris is a good runner. Um, Chris is a good runner. So yeah, do it, Chris. That'll be awesome, man. May at some point. I think you're at the 22nd of May. Get, definitely register, Kim. Um, distance running is my pyramid. 
pyramid? Oh, is your pyramid like the Great Pyramid? Yeah. Well, it won't take you 20 years, Sam, to uh, <laughs> to get good at running. I'm, we will wait for you, but I'm not waiting 20 years. You know, I'd get out of, I'd get, we'd finish the Manchester 10K when I'm 53. <sighs> Got a lot to do in that time, Sam. Four. Okay. Next quote by Abraham. So that was that was Abraham's quote was, "I'm a slow walker, but I never walk back." Quote four. Very, very, very. Uh, what's the word? You know, holds a lot of gravitas. This. Um, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Okay. Give me some hearts if you're creating your future right now. If you're consciously creating a future for yourself, or if you're leaving it to luck. Are you betting on luck? Are you betting on chance? Or are you betting on yourself? Okay, are you betting on yourself? I think everyone on this scope is betting on themselves because you're, you're, you're not the average kind of person if you're taking part in stuff like this. Um, so yeah, so the best way to predict your future is to create it. Let's stop betting on chance. Let's stop dabbling in success. If you wanna lose weight, guys, do you dabble or do you commit? Okay, you commit, don't you? Okay, so success is no different. If you want success, do you dabble in it a little bit or do you commit? Okay, you've gotta commit. So the best way to predict your future is to create it. So your future is created by what you do today. So when we said about preparing, you prepare today. I always say so because we're here and some of us are doing BPA. Exactly, no, you are guys, everyone on this scope you are all creating your own future for yourself. You know, you, 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 uh, you bet on yourselves, you are different. You're in the 1%, trust me. There's like 99% of people are not even conscious to any of the stuff that we talk about. So your future is created by what you do today. Start doing what is necessary to achieve your dreams today. You wanna be a healthy person in the future? Start exercising today and eat a healthy diet. It's just that simple, okay? Create your future, don't wait for it. You want to be successful in your acting career, stop dreaming and start taking action. Success won't just come and look for you. You've got to go out there, work hard and chase after it. Um, again, applies to anything in life, applies to absolutely anything in life. So many people, um, you know, just want things to turn up for them. Everything from, from job, dream jobs to their dream woman, their dream man, you know, uh, like fairy tales, oh, you know, They'll just turn up, Prince Charming will, will turn up one day. Actually, you know what? There's loads of things you can do. Go out there and find him if you want. Same for blokes, go out there and find Princess Charming. <laughs> princess Charming. Definitely should be a Princess Charming. So sexist. Um, so yeah, don't wait for your dreams to happen. Go and make them happen, okay? Um, what? Are you, just let me know, actually. It's interesting to know what you guys are kind of doing this month, what you want to achieve this month. What was like your first goal for the new year? What well, mine was to get Bulletproof Actor out, obviously by the end of the month and I'm on course of doing that. It's killing me, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's on course. Uh, I'm gonna show you some, some secret stuff in a minute to do, with, uh, to do with the launch of that. But let me know what your, uh, your things are doing. Lots of workshops, awesome Sam. Sam's doing loads of workshops. What are other people's kind of uh, goals for this month and, uh, and what are they doing to create that future for themselves as opposed to waiting for it? Um, casting artists and directors, awesome. Voiceover agent Gemma, yes! So Gemma did a voiceover reel with us last year. If you want to get into voiceover, go to vofocus.com, register for the uh, newsletter there and get the podcast for free. Um, I'm going to run some more uh, voiceover workshops in the future, probably starting in February, late February, I guess. Um, Gemma did an awesome reel, very talented, sounds great. Um, there's no reason, Gemma, you cannot get a voiceover agent with that reel if you uh, approach enough agents in the right way. Um, and you uh, you take enough action, definitely. If you only be if you believe you're not going to get an agent, you know what? You're not going to get an agent. I promise you. As I said on the scope on Friday, you will never out earn, you will never outgrow, you will never outperform, and you will never out achieve your belief system. If your belief system is that I'll be lucky to get an agent, then you'll be lucky to get an agent. If your belief system is I'm going to go and get an agent by the end of January with my my voice reel you're going to get an agent by the end of January with your voice reel. I promise you, okay? Absolutely promise you. I, um, I took that action th t today, well, this, this month. I was like, I'm going to get Dan Hubbard, awesome casting director, on Acts On This to do a podcast. If I'd have gone with the attitude of, I would be lucky to get Dan Hubbard, who cast Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, massive films, the new Jason Bourne film, all this kind of stuff, I wouldn't have got him. Uh, workshops, email CDs, production companies, directors, awesome Nina, taking massive action. I 
presumed that Dan was going to come on, act on this, and do a podcast with us. Um, tweeted him to say that if I even had to buy him a box at the Liverpool game and interview him at half time, I would make it happen. <laughs> he phoned me today, and we're doing the podcast. Uh, we're doing a broadcast, a live broadcast on Acts on This with Dan Hubbard next Tuesday night at six thirty. That's the nineteenth. Um, so, uh, so information is going to go out over the next couple of days for that, so people can register to attend that for free. Ask Dan as many questions you want within 60 minutes about casting. It'll be a very, very uh, exclusive opportunity, really. Not many people get to see Dan Hubbard because he only casts the biggest projects, big films, huge Hollywood blockbusters. Um, but had I gone with the mindset of, oh, he's not going to do it, he wouldn't have done it, I promise you. Going to London, surviving acts in Feb, and he's doing some talks there. That's enough for awesome. Good, good, good. Yeah, no, he's a great, great guy. Very giving. Uh, even though he works at the top, he, you know, he's very generous. Which brings me on, that was a perfect segue, I didn't mean to do it, into the fifth and final quote, okay, of Abraham Lincoln. This is, you know what, what it says, whatever you are, whatever you are, be a good one. And that's it. And now I, I think he means with that, not necessarily your career, what you are as a profession, it means as a person, okay? So no matter who you are, always strive to be a kind person. That's like how I live my life, right? Be a giver, not a taker. Be generous. Helping others will lead you towards success. In the process of helping others, you'll be learning yourself as well. You'll become better in that field. You'll be, the more you help people, the better you become at helping people. And more importantly, you will build up positive relationships with others, okay? Winston Churchill, put this quote in as well. I thought he was a great guy. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Also, have faith in karma, okay? I don't know if you believe in it or not, but I love seeing it repay people when, <laughs> when they've been dicks. Um, I'm getting very loose with my tongue and, and I've only had a coffee. It's a bit, I, I apologize to those who are taking offense. My nephew came up to the office over Christmas and he saw this. That's not what you want to show a nine-year-old, or my niece, who's only three, well, not even three yet. He said, Uncle Ross, there's a swear word on your wall. You're going to have to take that down, otherwise mummy will shout at me. I was like, but you know, she'll shout at me. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, uh, <laughs> I get passionate about stuff. So yeah, I like it when karma, karma repays people. So be kind, just be kind, be a good person, be generous, give as much as you can. Don't look at the world as a transactional thing, as what can I get? Uh, for what I give, look at what can, what what can I give, and what more can I give, and when you start doing that, when I made a conscious change a few years ago to just start living from that perspective, so many things change in my life, and people just want to be with you, around you, hang out with you, give you things, sponsor you, give you jobs, um, take you out. So many, you know, so many things change for you when you just live a generous life, you know. And also, when I went to LA in December, a mentor of mine said to me, he said. Um, Live with abundance, spend your money. I don't know how, I mean, I don't know whether this works yet or not, I'm gonna try it. But he said, spend your money like you've got an abundance of it. So, you know, rather than just tipping a waitress, you know, the 10% on the bill, which might be like, you know, two quid, tip her a fiver, you know, be generous with your money. Cause he's like, since he started doing that, he gets a lot more back. And whether that's karmic, or whatever it is, I don't know. I'm quite science-based, so I like to see science backs evidence as opposed to law of attraction necessarily and just putting stuff out there and all cosmic order and stuff. But I, who, who am I to say that doesn't work? Who am I to say who rules this place and how everything kind of works, okay? There's some very, very interesting kind of coincidences, shall we say, that happen sometimes that you go, wow. Was that a coincidence or was that something a little bit more than that? Um, I once... Um, and I'm not saying this, but I'm telling you this, right? I'm going to tell you something. I'm not telling it you to say, look at me and look how great I am, right? Um, I promise you, I hate it when people do this. If I ever do something generous and good for someone, I will never put it on Facebook. I will never say, oh, I did this today because I don't do it for that reason, okay? But I just want to tell you something. I, years ago when I used to go out drinking and partying in the casinos, right, in Manchester, um, there was a homeless guy called Alan who used to be outside the, the casino all the time. And I got to know him over the course of a few months and I'd always chat to him when I came out and we'd go to Subway and, and I'd get him a sandwich and stuff. And I chatted to him one night and he really wanted to go and see a friend of his who he also hung out with, who was also homeless, who had been put in um, some kind of hospital. He had an accident, something had happened and he was put in a hospital 
miles and miles and miles away from Manchester and Alan really wanted to go and see him because he wasn't in a good way at all, but he didn't have the money. And whether this is a con or not, right, I don't know. I, it's not that isn't for me to, to worry about, that's for Alan to worry about if it was a con. But he said, look, you know, the train fare would be about 60 quid and I don't have that kind of money. And I was intoxicated and I like helping people. So I went to the cash machine and I gave him 80 quid. I said, Alan, if you can see your friend, yeah, hopefully he'll be fine, but if it's the last time you ever see him or whatever, I know that I've done something good. And I did that for myself and because he asked for it, and I was in a position, luckily, to, to be able to do that. I didn't want any, any thanks for it. It was just because I was able to do it. You know, I was very grateful to be able to do it. No word of a lie. I went into the casino and I had a pound in change. I put it into the first slot machine that I saw and it dropped a hundred pounds on the first spin. Was that coincidence or was that karma or something a little bit more than that? I honestly don't know. I really don't know. But like I say, this guy who I met in America was like, spend your money like you've got a limitless supply of it and it will find a way to come back to you. So uh, we'll test that theory. I don't know. I don't know whether it'll work or not, but I'm definitely trying to live more of abundance. Um, in everything that I do because hopefully it will uh, you know it will come back so those are Abraham Lincoln's five awesome quotes you'll be able to download these quotes from actsonthis.tv in the periscope section when I upload the replay of this which will be available tomorrow and um, also like I say yeah Dan Hubbard will be coming on for a live broadcast on actsonthis.tv on Tuesday the 19th, 6.30 till 7.30. It's an Ask Me Anything event with Dan. You can ask him whatever you want to do with the acting industry and he will answer it. Very honest questions about casting, anything you like. Tweet us your headshots if you wanted to look at your headshot. Um, tweet us a link to your showreel, just whatever. And we will try our best to fit in as much as we can within that 60 minutes. I'm gonna send out information um, to people on the email list and through social media so you can register for your seat. There'll probably only be 100 seats available, so it'll be the first come, first serve on those. And before I go, let me show you what I'm unleashing to the world on Wednesday. So for those who have already, well, know me from these scopes and know me from Bulletproof Actor and maybe even bought the Bulletproof Actor course, um, you'll already be on the course, effectively. But because there's gonna be a lot of people out there who don't know me, don't know what I stand for, don't, you know, might not necessarily trust this guy. I go, who the hell is this guy to tell me that doing this stuff's going to improve my acting career? I'm launching a three-part free video series on Wednesday, uh, which is some, it's some really cool training. It's nowhere near as in-depth as the final product for Bulletproof Actor, but it's going to enable people to, at least if they don't go on and buy the product, because I know not everyone's in, the, in a position to pay for it, but if they don't, at least they're going to get some real value out of this. It comes out on Wednesday, so again, I'm going to be uh, tweeting it out. The first video comes out on Wednesday the 13th, Second video is Saturday the 16th. Third video is Tuesday the 19th. And then Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success, the actual full course opens up to the public on Wednesday the 20th. I'm gonna need your help, guys, to get it out there. If you think you've, or if you've already bought it and you think it's making an impact on you already, help me spread the word because the more of these I can get people to, to, uh, you know, to, to subscribe to and, you know, and actually take part in, the more units I can add to it, the more money I can invest in it, the more time I can spend on it, and the better we can all make it, and I can make future products and all sorts of stuff. So this is coming out on, uh, on Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna be sending it out to everybody. This is video one that's available. There's video two, three, and four coming soon. Uh, people can go to the Facebook group from there as well. Um, and this is uh, where they get, a, the first video is a 25 minute training um, on limiting beliefs. Um, and, the, and the things that really hold you back, because it's not your talent, in the acting industry that holds you back. It's not that at all, it's not your background that holds you back. It's not your looks that hold you back. It's your mindset, guys, okay? You know that because you're here and you're on this, but we need to get this message out to the other unconscious actors that are out there so that we can wake them up, guys. I wanna create a movement, I'm serious. I'm sick, and you'll see in that video, I say it, I am sick to death of seeing actors bitching in Facebook groups. You know which Facebook groups I'm talking about so negative I hate it and I'm sick of it I'm not gonna stand by and see it anymore okay the, the acting industry is not unfair and unjust and you know just full of sharks it isn't because I've got friends of mine who have gone right to the top of the industry have fought for it fought damn hard for it but they um, they didn't let their limiting beliefs and their minds hold them back had they it would have been a very different story Chris knows exactly which Facebook groups I'm on about. There's a few, there's one in particular, uh, it's very popular, but man, it's like a lynch mob. The minute someone goes on there and says anything about will you, will you work for less than a million pounds an hour, <laughs> they're like, oh my God, 
You don't appreciate actors. Yo, this is terrible. If I was a plumber, you would never ask me to work for less than a hundred pounds an hour. You know, how about you just shut up? You know, be humble. Get to work with some great people and actually always work forward rather than, you know, no matter how slow you go, as opposed to just slating it all and just work backwards, developing a negative scarcity mindset where everything's against you. Because what did I say before? Boom! You can't achieve, out-achieve out your belief system. If your belief system is everyone's out to get me, the industry's hard, you know what? Everyone will be out to get you and the industry will be all hard. If you're like, I'm going to take the industry, it's a great industry, I want to work with all these great people, it's full of kind people, nice people who want the best for us all, then you're going to see those people in the industry, meet them, hopefully audition for them, get on well with them, work with them. It, it's happened to me, I, you know, I'm, there's a lot of people who are proof that it can happen and you can live a really happy, fulfilled life, you know, I'm not a millionaire by any means, but I'm way better than I was when I was working in game for minimum wage eight years ago and it's all because my belief system changed, nothing else changed, just my belief system, I promise you nothing else changed, okay, didn't win the lottery, nothing changed. Um, it was just my mind that did. Um, I'm ranting a bit now, it's getting passionate again. I'm going, thank you so much. Seriously, he's right, directors want to work with positive actors. Exactly, honestly, it's true, isn't it, Chris? And how much of a laugh, Chris, when we're on set, do we have? Apart from the fact that I'm tied to a chair and I'm freezing cold. Um, and, uh, but it's funny, isn't it? It's still funny. We still don't look at it going, oh God, this film's not going to make it, this film, no one's going to watch this film. What if, it, what if it gets no hits? What if it doesn't do anything? How much syrup's in that coffee? Love it when Sassy Ross is on scotes. <laughs> My voice lecture is so negative, he constantly puts us in the industry down. Because he's jaded, Kim. How old is he? You know, he's probably, he's probably in his eyes, missed his opportunity to do what he really wanted to do. Maybe he's almost doing what he wants to do, but he's not quite done it. There was obviously a dream there that he never chased and he's just settled for voice teacher. Um, and that's what he's, you know, what's affecting his, his mindset, you know. It's um, another limiting belief that it's too late though. He could leave that job, even if he's 60, 70, 80, whatever. John Dutton is, a, is an older actor that Chris knows. 71, I think he is, 72. Inspiration. He's, I've never seen a guy who's, who, who's more focused and not afraid to ask questions and just go after it and get it. Um, he's awesome. Um, 30, he's only 36, Kim. Oh, this is bloody hell. There's loads, there's, he's got a lot of time left then. My lectures at uni were like that. I ignored them, did my own thing. You've got to, you've got to, because like you'll see when I launch this first video training, guys, some really funny exercises to do in there. You will see how other people's um, bad habits and other people's patterns um, uh, influence you, you know, that your environment influences you, so you pick up and do those bad habits as well. John did work with Tom Cruise recently as well. Um, he did. So John Dutton, 71, you know, got to the acting industry in his late 60s, like really late 60s, got a job with Tom Cruise because he was positive. Totally think that. He always tells us he knows best because he was a professional opera singer. He could have been that good if he's given up at 36. I'm guessing you can still be an opera singer well into your 50s, 60s. Um, you know, maybe even longer. You don't have to be, it's not like ballet, is it? You're throwing yourself around in the opera. Most people are massively overweight and just stand there. 36, he obviously wasn't that good. They should be inspiring people, not the opposite. Exactly, you know what? One of the best quotes a mentor of mine told me, he said, Ross, if you want to be a leader, he said, leaders create other leaders. He goes, fake leaders create followers. Simple as that, okay? And that's why you'll see a lot of people on Twitter who value themselves over their following, you know, in terms of like by their, they measure how successful they are by their, their amount of followers and that, that as a metric, as opposed to, you know, people with a smaller audience, but having a big impact on that smaller audience. I would rather influence five people on this scope tonight you know, and make a big impact in your life than having, you know, have a fake following of 20,000 people. Tom will love me then, although I'm not that old yet. Yeah, no, Tom will, Tom will totally be all over you, Nina. I swear, honestly, you're going to make some, uh, some ripples in Hollywood, you girl. Promise you. His attitude as a person is arrogant. His best role was an extra in River City. I would never, ever put down extra in River City, bar the fact that he's obviously just a very negative person and he's trying to put other people down. And that's another thing you're learning Bulletproof Actor. Sometimes, you know what, Kim, people don't want you to succeed because it brings them down. If you succeed, it just opens that gap between you and them and it makes them feel even worse about themselves why they aren't succeeding. So when your friends say, you know, don't do that, Kim, you could hurt yourself, or don't do that, you might spend money and not make it back. Don't do that because that's, that's not a stable thing to do. Actually, what they're probably saying is, please don't do that, Kim, because if you make it, I'm gonna feel terrible about my life. Okay? They don't always want you to win. He claims he hated the way they film things, so he just didn't go back. We think he got sacked. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, honestly, honest to God. It's just so fascinating. This industry, it, you know what, every, every part of life, but because of the acting industry, 
it, the only tool you have is yourself. You're selling yourself. It's not like I'm a baker. I can make a cake and blame the oven or blame whatever for the mistake. Um, actors can't blame anybody. Well, try to blame everybody but themselves. But most of the time, it is just themselves they have to blame because we are the tool, we're the product, we're the business. You know, you are everything in your acting career. That is it. There is nothing else. You can't go and buy a shiny object that's going to make you a better actor. Set bulletproof actor on unstoppable confidence in success. <laughs> but it's all going to teach you intrinsic values, internal motivation, automatic success. You know, literally unstoppable confidence so that you can go out there and actually get what you want without letting fear hold you back. Um, I'm waffling again. We're going on and on. Love you guys. It's amazing. Thanks so much for, for joining us again. I'll be back on Wednesday. Um, where um, we can, you can tell me what you think of video one, uh, which will be released on Wednesday as well, the free video series um, in anticipation for the new course. There's a great interview with George Lucas on success. I'll find you a link. Yes, I would love that. I would love to have George Lucas on the podcast or on, on a broadcast perhaps on this. <laughs> that would be amazing. Guys, John Boyega's not happening. He's going out to LA because of Star Wars 8. He can't do it yet. He's going to do it when he gets back. So we're going to do a podcast or a broadcast with John Boyega. Um, he just couldn't do it when I wanted him to do it. Um, but we are going to make that happen. So that's pretty cool. I've got a, uh, I've got a substitute that'll tell you who that is, um, as well. Another great actor who's working big in America. Um, he looks a bit like John Boyega, actually, but um, it's a totally different chap. But you'll find out about that soon. You'll keep that under wraps. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, Dan Hubbard is uh, is our guest, our casting director guest on Tuesday. So until uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday coming, Dan's next Tuesday. Um, have a fantastic one. It's a goal for me, Kim. It is definitely. We will get John Boyega on here. Um, one of my friends is really good friends with him. It's going to happen. I promise you it'll happen. It's just when. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not if, it, it's when. Um, we'll make it happen and I will, uh, I will catch you guys soon. Tweet me any, uh, anything you might want to talk about on Wednesday at Ross A. Grant or at Bulletproof Act. Make sure you're following Bulletproof Act on Twitter and please guys, just help me spread the word. The more we can make people aware of this, particularly when this video course is out on Wednesday, I'm going to like need you as like a little promotional team for me, I suppose. Um, the more uh, you, we can do it, get it out there, the better I can make it, you know, and expand it um, and not have seven months of my life. <laughs> Gone to waste. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'll catch you on Wednesday, guys, 10 p.m. Be there. I'll be somewhere nowhere near as good. Bye for now.